and we're live. Uh, hopefully, I'm gonna wait for it to show up on YouTube so that I can see that we're actually live. And that is it, excellent. I am very excited, ooh. I'm gonna mute myself so I don't have to talk over my own speaking voice. Welcome everybody to this week's stream. Um, so before we get started, I just want to say real quick, just so you know, because there was a comment on the last YouTube video, uh, this is not, um, you know, something that I really spend a lot of time preparing for. It's really meant to be sort of a view into what my actual work process looks like. So I don't like write the code and then delete it and come back and write it again. This is very much like the real thing. This is raw. It's live streaming. So. Um, I am, I just wanted to, to set your guys' expectations accordingly. This is just, uh, me hanging out and working with you guys. All right. So last week we got started on this, uh, project using named entity recognition from Spacey to, uh, look at the co-occurrence of, uh, named entities in rumors. So um, online rumors, you might call them fake news. Um, so fake news stories that have been spread around. And I wanted to see what entities tended to get mentioned together. And let's go to our kernel. And I get some questions about this from time to time, how to find the kernels that you uh, were working with previously. And you go to kernels and you can go to your work. Uh, and they should automatically be sort with the most recent ones at the top. Um, and I can get started. All right. So at the end of last week's stream, I didn't get a chance to show you guys because it was still running when I when I ducked out for dinner. Um, we actually did get a graph and here it is. It looks like a meatball maybe or a slime mold um, but as you can tell this is not readable we can't actually get information from this so my goal this uh, this time is to actually get this graph to the point where it tells us something interesting uh, and I have not worked with the uh, what package is this network X package before so this is gonna be a learning experience for me all right let's edit this baby uh, and actually what I want to do in this tab is pull up the network X documentation. Um, Cause my thought is, so when we plotted it the first time, we didn't actually say anything about, uh, excuse me, uh, I had an ice cream sandwich after lunch and uh, I'm regretting that a little bit, but it was really good. Um, so we didn't specify anything about the size of the nodes. We didn't specify anything, specify anything about the thickness of the edges. Um, I'm really quickly just gonna go through here and run the things that we ran before. Uh, and you guys can go back and watch last week since since we're doing it on YouTube now they're all automatically just stay on YouTube they won't be at the exact same URL they'll be at a separate URL for the video that's sort of like created afterwards um, and oh yeah this is one's gonna take a while here we're drawing all the edges uh, and then here we are creating the graph and I think what I want to do is I want to make some changes uh, because when we originally did it, we just sort of plotted the basic graph on its own. And what I'm interested in doing is, I think I want to be node size to be number of mentions. And I want edge width to be constant. And I want no edges for entities. I think I actually just want to remove entities. So no entities with, let's say fewer than, let's actually start with a big number. Let's say 50 mentions. And then we can fine tune this as we go along. So my idea here is instead of the meatball, uh, we're gonna have something a little bit 
more informative. Uh, and I'm hoping that I can do all of this with NetworkX, which somebody uh, recommended to me last time. So thank you very much for your help with that. I am, I'm less familiar with the Python ecosystem than I am with the R ecosystem. Uh, let's look at the tutorial maybe while we are creating our data structure here. Okay, nodes. We can add nodes individually one by one. Oh my God, let's not do that. That would take forever. Oh my gosh. Okay, um, you should not change the node object if the hash depends on its contents. Okay, uh, add one edge at a time. Again, not interested in doing that. All right. Uh, Actually, I want just like a, like a gallery. Like I want to see a graph. Mm. Let's see. Okay. So here's a graph and this is not primarily a graph drawing package, but basic drawing with MATLAB as well as an interface to use an open source graph for the software package are included. Okay. So drawing is not the main thing here. So I don't know. Let me just move my mic so I can. Uh, sound a little better. So drawing is not the main thing here, which might mean we might end up with sort of an ugly graph, which, well, it's a little bit, oh, that's nice. Uh, it's the, the Chrome logo. Mm. See drawing for additional details. Cause I want to, um, make sure that when I'm creating the graph, I have the right attributes for the thing that I am interested with, interested with, of interested in. So I want to be able to make bigger, uh, I'm going to be able to make pie graph is GitHub IO. I'm not familiar with pie graph is. I want to make bigger nodes for larger mentions and I should have that information. Uh, yeah, so I have count and co-occurrence information in my dictionary of dictionaries object that we're creating now. And it's going to take a while because it's a big data set. Um, and as you can see, uh, we are using pretty much all the compute we've got. We are, we're really going ham on this. Um, it's a, Pretty, pretty hefty. Well, let me give it this. We have a little bit more screen. Let's say pretty hefty process we're doing here. So it is going to take a minute. Um, let's try a pie graph viz examples. That's what I want. I want a vignette, except that that's not a Python thing. I want a Python vignette, uh, simple and more complicated examples. Okay. This is a lot of clicks on links that have examples in them to actually see the examples. Uh, all examples okay uh tributes that pi uh okay I, I actually wanted to see like the the graph of the visualization part of it hmm draw a graph set attributes okay that is what I'm interested in doing I'm interested in setting attributes so let's take this out we might want to add this second library uh to filled circle true FFF. So these are the default node attributes. Okay, make a star in shades of red. Okay, so this is going through each node individually. Uh, so it's looping through the nodes and for each node, it's making it slightly redder. I was really hoping for something we wouldn't have to futz with at a really low level. I was hoping for something that had, uh, um, less hands-on, more sort of automating thing. Uh, okay. Graph is dart for pi dot. Graph is, let's check it out. Error, page not found. Well, noted. Okay. Oh, noted, like nodes in a graph. 
Mm. Sorry, I know this is a sort of a slow start, but like I said, I didn't do uh, a bunch of um, research beforehand because I want you guys to see my process. Python interface to graph is graph layout and visualization package for graph viz, blah, 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 drag, graph, graph, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Hmm. So we can draw graphs is the thing because we did it last time. Um, let's find out what the draw function actually does. Uh, okay, it's... Oh, so it's not a method of the graph. It's not an attribute of the graph. It's not an attribute of the nodes. It's edges, self loops, attributes. Okay, so here's how we set the node attributes. Let's save that for later, because uh, we are going to want to do that. Uh, I don't especially care about edge attributes. Graph is not on this list, unless I can't read good. Oh, it was draw. Draw was the function. Yeah, draw is not on this list. Okay. Uh, it's under, under graph, it is not. Okay, so let's go back to drawing. Ah, there we go. Draw the graph G with matplotlib. Draw the graph G using matplotlib. Draw the nodes of graph G, draw the edges of graph G, draw load name, node labels, node labels, draw edge labels, draw the graph G with a circular layout. Uh, now our graph with shell layout. Okay. Let's check out this draw function and see what arguments we can give it. Dictionary is optional. A dictionary with nodes as keys and positions as valued, if not specified, is a spring layout position. If not specified, a spring layout positioning will be computed. I don't know what that means. Spring layout may be like a welling from a spring or like repulsing each other, like boing springs. I have no idea. I don't think it's that important. Uh, draw the graph in the specified matplotlib axes. That's not important. Uh, keywords, see network x dot draw underscore network x for a list of keywords. Let's check them out. Arrows, no. Arrow style, no. Node list. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So here's how we can get rid of some of the nodes. So let's actually do that first. Let's get back to coding. I know this has been a lot of reading documentation. Uh, Soup. So, node list. Uh, let's see. So, I'm going to write what we're going to do. Get a list of nodes with more than 50 mentions, I think I said. Uh, and then draw a draw a graph because we've created the graph. Now we're just drawing the graph with only those nodes. Okay, uh, so this is the part that we have to do now, and I think we can do this from ooh, ooh, uh, concur dot edges. So let's quickly check out what concur dot edges looks like. Uh, and this should be a dictionary of dictionaries. So let's uh, look at the first item. I don't work with dictionaries that much. Um, what? Sorry, first item, zero. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, maybe it's because it's a dictionary of dictionaries and it needs two indices. Nope, that didn't work either. Um, Let's see, and this one we did up here just uh, prints the whole dictionary, which is gonna be enormous. So we don't wanna do that because we'll crash our kernel. Uh, Python look at dictionary items. And I only wanna look at some of the items. Mm. 
I just want to sort of see see a couple of examples. Uh, so I think I can actually get keys and let's get the first key. That's not, no, it doesn't do that. Is it just gonna get all the keys? Oh, this is gonna crash our kernel. It's gonna print too many things. Mm. Okay, oh, that wasn't too bad. So now we can see the, uh, there's a lot of things that are just blank, which I wonder if it's because they are in a different character encoding maybe? And non ASCII, no idea. Um, so you can see we have a lot of named entities. We have uh, Donald Trump's possessive US Starbucks, Aloha snack bar, Queen Elizabeth, Trump, 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 Obama, Donald Trump's Planned Parenthood, Trump's Obama, Malia. Hmm. That's sort of weird that there's a lot of repetition in this list. How do we actually make this? Co-occurrence dot dot ends. Encode at edges update co-occurrence. Oh, I think we just added it at the end. Um, let's see what items looks like. Wish me luck. Is this gonna crash the kernel? Okay, no, not too bad. Um, oh, I see we have so much repetition because it's the dictionary of dictionaries and each dictionary is um, a node and then each dictionary within that is the um, nodes that have a link to it. Okay, I get the data structure now. Uh, is there any way for me to say where the weight is more than one? Okay, so that's going to be an attribute. Python get attributes get dictionary items with uh, by attribute. This might be one of those things that's not actually doable. Hmm. So I want to filter the dictionary so I only have. I only have dictionaries within the dictionary. Okay, so I, I gotta, I can't do this at the top level. I have to do it, cause it's a dictionary of dictionaries. So I have to do it within each dictionary, right? So here's Georgia and Georgia is associated with this whole dictionary. I'm trying to find out where the other brace for this curly brace is here. So George is associated with this whole dictionary and actually would kick out all of these if we were looking for things that had an occurrence of more than one. And we might actually wanna do that. We might actually, instead of more than 50, do more than one, um, can I actually do, uh, can I get the first item? Is that a thing? That's not a thing. Okay. Uh, oh, I have to do it by, by the, by the key. I think it's Georgia. Is that going to work? That's not going to work. Okay. Um, Get. Welcome to not knowing about Python data structures with your host, Rachel. <laughs> okay, um, getting the items. Accessing dictionary items as object attributes, which is what I'm expecting. It's what I want to do. Uh, yeah, I want to avoid doing lots of nesting looping through if I can. It looks like I'm not going to be able to, but okay. So you can do hmm, 
for a person in Starfleet for episode in Star Trek, if person name and episode character. So this is two diction different dictionaries that are have similar entities between the two. Uh, someone says dick dot key. Let's try that. Oh, it's also entirely possible that I have misspelled Georgia. Let me just look at how it's spelled real quick. I think I'm going to solve the mystery. Yeah, it's, I've definitely been misspelling Georgia. No, select. There we go. This might need to be in quotes. No, okay. Uh, hmm. Was that the top level entry? Was there one above it that I missed? This is not the most memory efficient way to do this. Da da da. da items. Da da da. Yeah, I think that was the top level, right? Because we had, yeah, okay, so that's one entry. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So this suggests that I should be able to do name and episode characters. Hmm. Person, episode, so, so, prince. Sorry, let me make this bigger. I know it's a little bit small right now. Um, person, Star Trek. So these, this is a dictionary and this is a dictionary. Sorry, Starfleet and Star Trek are both dictionaries. And these are all of the keys in each dictionary. Person, name, and episodes, characters. Hmm. That should work though, shouldn't it? Let's try a different one. Let's try US. Let's see if that gives us any joy. Because that's definitely the same syntax they're using. And I don't think this is one of those things that happens in Python 2 and not Python 3, but maybe it is. I don't know, man. It's not name and episode deck characters. I don't. Hmm. So is this a dictionary within that dictionary? Does this work? No. Uh, let's try Georgia. Georgia. Does that work? No. Well, noted. Your example is 2014. Okay, yeah, that's probably Python 2. Uh, Python 3. Dictionary. I just want to get items. I just want to get items out of it. Uh, all right. Tell me more about this method. What does it do? Mm, returns a list of the dicks key value tuple pairs. Okay. Yes. Produces the following result. Okay, yes. This is what we're getting. Mm. Python 3, dictionary of dictionaries, complete beginner tutorial. Uh, Python 3 dictionary. I like the, the sound of simple and easy. Let me zoom in a little bit so y'all can read a little bit easier. Where the above code is executed, it produces the following. Da, 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 da. Okay. Okay, print. That's what we were doing though, and it's not working. All right, what's the what's the command to get the data type? Maybe this isn't actually a dictionary of dictionaries. I was like ninety nine percent sure it was, but now that one percent is like maybe it's not. Uh, Python check data 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 type. Uh, that is what I want. You can tell I've searched for this before. Uh, should just be type. 
I don't think this is going to work. I don't think I actually want to know the data type. I think I want to know the data structure. Okay, it's a dictionary. And it works for this. Okay, while we're working on this, let's um, create our graph. <sighs> okay, we created our graph. Hmm. Let's see what G looks like, maybe? Can we sort of get an idea of what it looks like? Uh, let's look at the edges, I guess. This is probably going to be pretty big. Okay, Georgia to first, Georgia to US. Turkey to 2002, Sean Spicer to one, China to, mm, China to examples, mm, to examples, fitness gram to test. Okay, this is more or less what I'd expect. I just want to get rid of all of these edges that only occur once. This seems like it should be simple. Uh, okay, it'll be simple the next time I'll do it because I'll know what I'm doing. Hmm. Uh, remove entries from dictionary of dictionaries base, based on the value. Let's see if that works. Moving entries from a dictionary based on values. That is what I want. Okay, let's see if this works. I want to reduce the same dictionary. Okay, yes, yes. Uh, or the dictionary in combination with a generator expression. All right, dict comprehension. Oh, this is like a list comprehension thing. It's one of those Python specials. I'm sure that it happens in other languages too. It's just very Python-y to me. All right, okay, v and hand.items if v. Okay, so this is actually making a copy. I have no idea what k and v is here. Let's learn more about dictionary comprehension. I think this is probably, oh my God, it's so small. I think this is probably our best guy, uh, best option here. All right. Um, uh, dictionaries, southern, uh, blah, 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 associative arrays, sequences, indexed by keys. It probably says something about adding a constant time in here. This is definitely the syntax and it's definitely not working and I am at my wits end. Okay, the dict constructor builds dictionaries directly from sequences of key value pairs. We've done that, we're good. In addition, dictionary comprehensions can be used to create dictionaries from arbitrary keys and value expressions. Uh, x squared for x and two, four, six. Oh, so the key of x is equal to x squared. So x is being mapped to these, two, four, and six is you know, two, four, six, and then squared. So the key is two, the value is two squared, which is four. The key is four, the value is four squared, which is 16, and so on. Okay, that makes sense. I'm, I'm down with this right now. When the keys are simple strings, it is sometimes easier to specify pairs using keyword arguments. Okay, I think we're well past that. When looping through a sequence, because we already have our dictionary, we made it. When looping through a sequence, the position index and corresponding value can be retrieved at the same time using the enumerate function. Okay. Uh, let's see if this will work. Maybe this will let us print some of our entries and we can take a look at them. What? Uh, where are they getting? I and V from, no, not that one. There we go. I'm gonna put this one next to the, the kernel we're working in. Print IV. So V is the, that's a lot. Oh, oh no, this is creating a dictionary. This isn't reading a dictionary, so that's not gonna help us, none. 
So this is just another way to uh, create dictionaries instead of using list comprehension. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, and that's all I got. That was it. We read all of the dictionaries. Oh, list comprehensions. I somehow clicked on the wrong thing. Dictionaries. There we go. I think we read all of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, I want the information out of it. So for those of you who are just joining me, we had this dictionary of dictionary concur underscore edges. Uh, and I know it's a dictionary because I checked the type. And if we look at, um, oh, it's co-occur, not concur. Uh, if we look at concur edges dot items, we can see a bunch of dictionaries. Oh my God, I know what the problem is. Oh my God, I figured out the problem. I'm so dumb. I was trying to index by the items and not the key. I bet this is gonna work. I mean, famous last words, but I bet it is. Well, maybe it won't. Or maybe that's one key. That can't just be one key. Each of these has to be a separate key, yeah? You'd think. All right, let's try Obama. All right. So let's, no, scroll my mouse in the other place. Let's try co-occur edge. No, co-occur edges. And then Obama. Let's see if that works. Oh. No, no, that didn't work. Okay, well, it was a good idea, I guess. Um, hmm, because I'm looking in here and seeing if we can find like a second square bracket uh, that will show us that like all of these are one key. Honestly, at this point, I'd settle for just being able to get one dictionary out of this dictionary of dictionaries. Properties of dictionary keys, dictionary names. Okay, keys must be immutable. Strings, numbers, or tuples as dictionary keys, but something like key is not allowed. No longer available in Python 3, total length of the dictionary. All right, uh, I don't, that's, that's not helpful. I was gonna see, let's see how long the dictionary is. Uh, Someone, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, for k in dict.keys, print dict.k. Let's try it. I want to tell you, I feel pretty dumb right now. Hmm. Descriptor keys of dict documents and use an object. Oh, that's right. It needs to be the name of the dictionary. Uh, whoop. Thank you. Okay, we have made progress. Okay, so we looped through. So what we did was we looped through the keys, which are each of the dictionaries, and we printed the whole dictionary. So this is each of the dictionaries. So this is our first dictionary without its key because we didn't print the key. Um, and also I'm gonna put this in the second line because it bothers me. Um, all right. Let's see if I can get the weights that are more than one from here. For J in K. If okay, so this is the keys, and I still want I don't want the keys, I want the values. Ooh, okay, that's not a thing. 
I'm just going to quickly uh, use tab complete up here. Values. Okay, that is it. If j dot values greater than one, print k. Actually, no, print k. Oh, and also we're in Python 3. Okay, that didn't work. Spacey.tokens.span.span object has no attribute values. Oh. Oh. It might be type J. Oh. Print type J. They're not dictionaries. Aha. Okay. These are spacey.tokens.span.span. That span. Interesting. So we don't actually have a dictionary of dictionary. We have a dictionary of spans. So I don't know what to do from here. Uh, if I was doing this in R, it would have been done 20 minutes ago. Okay. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, I think actually my problem might be here. I think I want to print the values from there. Yeah, that is actually what I wanted to do. Okay. Um, if, oh, nope, wait, it's greater than one. Print J. Let's see if that works. Not supported. Uh, okay, how do I get what the specific if J dot wait? I don't think it's gonna work. Yeah, that didn't work. Okay. Uh, so we want to get the values mm. it's not supported between instances of dict values and int all right and i think at this point we can go back to that other stack overflow question we were looking at i think we might have closed it uh python check Dictionary value greater than. Yes, this is what I want. Thank you, Stack Overflow. Oh, I saw uh, Julia Silgi at a uh, joint statistics meeting and I got a tidy tech sticker. And also, I got to talk to Julia, which is the real prize there. Uh, but also, I'm very excited about the sticker. Uh, yeah, dict dot value is greater than equal to x. That's what I tried. It didn't work. Dot item will return key value pairs that you can use to reconstruct. D dot items. Okay, I think I get it. So I think what I need to do. So we're creating a new dictionary with a key and a value. Oh, this isn't going to work. This is going to work because this is going to create a new dictionary. Um, it's just going to create a bunch of new dictionaries. I'll need to append to the dictionary. But the other problem is that it's going to end up creating one flat dictionary. Uh, Ryan Carson says, could you just cast it to an int? You know what? Let's give that the old college try. Is it as dot int? Nope. Can I can I just say int? I think it's just gonna be like, no, that's not a number. Int argument must be a string, a byte like object or a number, not dict dot values. Uh In 
unless, of course, I'm just doing it in dict.items if v greater than something. Dict comprehension syntax. That's not going to be helpful for here. That's a Python 2 thing. You want dict i, not dict.values. Dict.values will find a whole list of values that are in the dictionary. Dict i for i and dict of dict i. Would that work? Let's try that. That might work. Whoop. Print. Oh, no, I do need that because it's less comprehension. Uh, so I'm moving the if statements in here so I can get rid of that. Except it's not dict, it's called j at this point. j, ji is greater than one. All right, no. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> I do that all the time. Oh, I was like, oh, those are all equal to one. Yeah, because I asked for them if they were equal to one. Well, those are empty, huh? Okay. Well, hmm. I got some output, which is definitely an improvement over what I was getting before, which is to say no output. I think I actually just want J. Let's see if that'll help. That did not shed light on the matter. Okay. So what am I asking for? So this is the keys in the outer dictionary, and then I'm getting the values for each key in the outer dictionary. So in here, we have a set of dictionaries. And for each dictionary, I want to print the dictionary for each item in the dictionary. Hmm. How about edges.k.values? Okay, no, 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 no. So, this k is already our first level of dictionary and then we're getting the values from each of those dictionaries and i want to print the value for each of those if the value is greater than one if the value at that index is greater than one What if I get rid of this for now and just see how that go? Okay, so this is just So that's just printing the values. I want the keys as well. So I think I want to say print K and J. I can't do that. Uh what if I say print K? That gets nothing. Okay. So, and that would be the outer most key. So that would be. Ugh. Why did I pick this data structure? I picked this data structure because it fits in nicely to the graphing framework. And I would rather futz with this data structure than try and build another graphing framework. Mm, the real question is why am I doing this in Python? because I want to learn and grow. Okay. Uh, let's try printing K and then printing J and then printing J again. Okay. And I think this will help us figure out what we have. So, we have the EPA like five times. Oh, that's right, because it has 
different different edges so I actually I want to move this one to the outside because I only want to print it once per dictionary so this is the key of the outermost dictionary which uh, is the name of the node and then the innermost dictionary has the link to all of the other nodes that it has an edge with all right so what we see here is I don't know why this is empty. Oh, I think it's because I actually don't need them square brackets. I think it's just printing the square brackets. Generator object. Okay. Uh, I think I did actually need the square brackets, as it turns out. So it's a generator object that's empty. Uh, question is all weights are one. That might be the case. But I want a way to like see that. Hmm. Print I. I wonder if all weights in the entire data structure are one? There surely is a. Because it should be that. Oh, here we go. Yeah, here's a weight of. No, no, that's the entity 13. That's not a weight of 13. Because what I thought I was doing. Also, that's a weird entity. The first 45 days of 2017. So what I thought I was doing was I was creating a dictionary. Maybe I'm appending instead of, no, updating should do this. So I should have a dictionary where every key is an entity. And then whenever we find an entity co-occurring with a different entity, what should be going on is we should look in our dictionary and if it exists, we should say, oh, that exists. And at that point we should look within that dictionary at the entities listed within that dictionary. And if the entity that we're currently, so we, we have an A and a B, and we look in the dictionary for A. And when we find A, we add it if it's not there, we look in that dictionary for B. And if we find B, we update it. So we, we, we change our, we update the counter by one. And if we don't find it, then we should add B. So all weights should only be one if all entities only ever occur together once, which is sort of an interesting finding in and of itself, right? Because most news stories have relationships between entities that happen, you know, multiple times. Um, but I would be surprised if that happened based on our data set. Let me take a, take a look at the data set. Snoops. That's what we were looking at. Let's make that a little bit bigger. It looks a little bit funky because we're zoomed so far in. Uh, and the one that we were looking at was claim. I'm going to zoom out a tiny bit so we can actually read this. Uh, so you can see that there's a lot of repetition within the thing. Georgia first. Oh, let's go down. So Georgia, uh, Equinox allows eggs to be blah, blah, blah. Joan Booker. Okay, there's no really good examples here, but there's a lot of ones about like Trump and Obama. And I'm imagining that, um, you know, those things will be co-occurring in more than one context. Mm. And I guess I could be wrong about that. So it could be the data or my idea of what's going on with this data structure could also be wrong. So we could have instead of one entry for each key we might have multiple entries for each key but my understanding of the dictionary as a data structure is that it shouldn't allow that because instead of looking at an index it looks for a hash of the key and if it's the same key the hash should be the same mm. uh, so i am a little bit flummoxed about what's happening here
Can I do this? I wonder. No. Can I do this? Probably not. No. Okay. Um. Can I do this? Still no. All right. Noted. Uh. Okay. So my expectation is that we should not always have weights of one, like uh, Trump and American, I imagine, and Republican. Like I definitely imagine that like Republican, US, Trump and American occur together more than once. And I think you're right. I think all of our weights are one. So I think the problem because remember, I want to get rid of the reason we're, we're doing this whole folder all is I want to get rid of entities with a large number of mentions, which is not actually what I'm doing right now. I'm really getting rid of entities with a large, I'm trying to find entities that co together, that co occur more often. Uh, Okay, so I have uh, not done what I've said I was doing for a while, but that's okay. I think it's still I think it's still worthwhile to find uh, entities that co occur more than once. Because uh, if if I'm interested in patterns, right, and I'm interested in things that happen a lot. So I think I'm okay with the direction that I went down, but also I have not finished the thing. So I think there might be something up with this bit. And I'm not 100% sure what it is. Uh, let's really quickly check what update is. Dictionary update Python three. Don't tell me no two. Method updates with the dictionary with the elements from another dictionary object or from an iterable of key value pairs. Okay, so I, I am creating uh so the, the co occurrence function that we wrote up here creates a dictionary. Here you go. Uh so we are taking our existing dictionary and we're updating it. So there's no problem with the data types not matching. Uh, the syntax of update is other. The update method takes either a dictionary and opt blah, blah, blah. If update is called without passing parameters, the dictionary remains unchanged. That's clearly not happening. We have a big dictionary with a lot of entries. Uh, in fact, we have a big dictionary with, let's see. Oh, it's not called dictionary. It's called Cooker Edges. Uh, 7,000 entries. So clearly the dictionary has happened and it's been updated. So we've, add, we've added mm, values. Update method updates. Or an interval, blah, 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 blah. All right, let's run this and see what's going on. I'm going to make this bigger so you guys can see it too. Um, Okay. Hmm. So maybe it's just when it's updating, it's appending instead of iterating. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. So I thought it would increase the count. And I think what it's doing is just making a new dictionary and popping it on the end. And that's not what I want. So the problem is in here. To do 
And then instead of just adding the new dict, um, add. So what do we want to do? We want to add new entries to the existing entries. And if a key value pair already exists, iterate it. Increase the count by one. Okay. That's what I want to do, and it's what I thought I was doing, and it is not what I was actually doing. So that's not ideal. Um, so we're going to have to fix that, and I'm not entirely sure how. This one I might actually go through and do a little bit of, um, little bit of research on. Uh, on my own. I don't usually do that, but I should, I should be better at Python data structures. I know that's one of the things that it's just like, I'm getting there. I'm definitely learning more. I'm improving, but it's uh, very counterintuitive for me just at the moment. So I will build those intuitions. Um, and I think I'm going to call it here for the day because I'm tired in my brain and I have another meeting after this. This has been my like nice little chill and relax and hang out and code portion of the day. Um, I've been in a lot of meetings today and it's not over yet. So thank you very much for joining me. I'm sorry this is sort of unsatisfying, but also we, uh, uh, we solve some problems. So I know where my problem is and that is a really good first step. Uh, shows. that our counts are all one. I'll actually try this. Let's actually do exactly equal one. Oh, that doesn't work. Okay. Uh, interesting. But that works. Weird. Oh, no, I know why that doesn't. No, I need, I want the second one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, uh, so I'm going to call it a day. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, thanks for your help, guys. I really appreciate it. You definitely helped me get, get unstuck. Uh, and I will see you guys next Friday. Yeah, I'm not going to be traveling or anything, so I will be back next Friday. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.